Good afternoon, happy Thursday. I hope y'all have had a great week. And welcome to Creations by Jalee. I am Jalee, Ed is behind the camera. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch any questions that you might have uh, and relay them to me while we work on this wreath. If not, uh, I will go back and read the comments and answer any questions after the live is over. Today, um, I wanted to do, I wanted to take some mesh from Hobby Lobby because we've talked about Hobby Lobby's mesh and um, I have told you it, it's not the best quality of mesh, but you can make a nice looking wreath from it. I started out uh, years ago when I started making wreaths. I bought all my mesh from Hobby Lobby. Now true, at that point, all their mesh was 10 foot. Now you have to be careful and just make sure you read uh, the packaging. If it is a six foot roll, then know that you're gonna to need to buy two of them. But if you buy uh, the mesh that says 10 foot, you can make um, a nice wreath with it. Um, you might wanna get a, a contrasting color and just add a little bit to it. We may do that today. I don't know, we'll see. But I kinda of want to take you step by step where you could use a wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Some pipe cleaners make your own wreath form. I use these. When I'm not using Unique in the Creek boards, um, this is how I make all my wreath forms. Very seldom ever do I buy the wreath forms that already have the little twist ties on them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, this was just a better deal for me. I try to keep the price of my wreaths high quality, but a lower price. And this just works better for me. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Uh, but we're going to talk about the mesh. Let me say, I'm not going to show our uh, giveaway for this month again. I've shown it two or three times. If you want to see it and what it consists of, go back and look at uh, Monday. No, actually I did the live on Tuesday. Um, but anyway, that is our giveaway for this month. And all you have to do to be eligible for it, and you can do it during the live video, or you can go back and watch replay. Just put in hashtag April kit and the first uh, live that I do in May, we will draw a name from our blessing bag and that person will receive the whole kit. It's from Magnolia Design Company and it's an entire um, stencil kit. It comes with two dish towels, the ink, two stencils, the squeegee, everything. But um, that's how you qualify for it. If you're new to my page, just put in hashtag April kit if you think it's something you would like to work with. Okay, let's talk about this mesh. This is actually, I, I cut just about the whole row, and this is actually what it looked like. It, it's a fairly nice mesh. I enjoy using the neutral tones because you can make a neutral base, just change out your ribbon, maybe change out your sign, and use it year round for different things. Uh, but this is a fairly good, thick quality of mesh. It actually has jute running through it, which means you cannot cut it with a wood burner. So you have to use your rotary cutter, which I hope you all know, but anyway, if you don't, this is a rotary cutter. You can buy them at Hobby Lobby, you can buy them at Walmart. Um, just keep your blade sharp. You need a mat that's a self-healing mat so that you don't cut your table or anything like that. Um, I don't use it on glass, I, I use the mat. But anyway, for this, here, this is what this looks like and it has a white label if you're in Hobby Lobby sometime and you want to look at their mesh they actually have this I believe in a black and gray uh, I, I buy this a good bit but I never buy it unless it's half price and it was not half price this week so next week it should be their ribbon and their mesh will be half price which means it's normally $9.99 which means you get it for five dollars which is not a bad price at all for 10 foot. Now, if it says 18, 10 yards, I'm sorry. If it says 18 feet, then that's just six yards, so you'll need to buy two. Now, if you get one and it's 10 yards, that's 360 inches. You got 50 stars. Oh, thank you. you. Karen, Karen, huh? Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. Y'all, that, that helps me pay for shipping on the things that I ship out free. Okay, so you've got 360 inches. 
and I put 18 ties on my frame. So I just divide 18 into 360 and you get 20 inches. That would use up the whole row. Now, sometimes the manufacturer shorts you a little bit. I don't like to go the whole 20 inches because then if you get down and you've cut, you need 18 of them and you've cut 17 and all of a sudden all you have is 10 inches left. I usually do about 19 inches, 19 and a half. And you see, I had a little bit left, but you could use this if you wanted to, just to fill in a spot. Um, but I'd rather have a little bit left than not have enough mesh if I only bought one row. So anyway, that's how I figure out how long to make. And I, you can eat, cut them at 19 and a half, and there's, you could do the curl method with that. You could do what they call the kerfuffle. You could do the ruffle. Uh, so, and it makes a full mess, and I, mesh wreath, and I'm gonna, it makes a mess too. Um, I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes, but let's talk about, and let me show you, and I'm gonna get up and do it from the side, because I think you can just see better um, when I do that, even though I have to bend over the table. Okay, but I start with my Dollar Tree wreath frame, and they're 14 inches, unless Dollar Tree decides to change them. At one point, I have so many of these back there, y'all. At one point, um, there was a shortage of them and you had problems getting them, so I bought up a bunch of them. I ordered a case. Okay, so what I like, now this, there's several ways to do this. I'm just gonna show you what I like to do, and I'll kind of try to explain why I like to do it that way. You have one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Each section you're gonna take, and this crossbar, just take a pipe cleaner. I try to either kind of match my pipe cleaner to either my mesh or the sign. This is a little, uh, it's not cream, but it's fine. So I go to this inside, this is wire one, two, three, and four. So I go to this inside wire and I put it between that crossbar like that. And then you're gonna take and twist. Now, if you just twist it, it will slide up and down. So I twist it one time, and then I take one of them and go under that bar and back around. Does that make sense? See, it's not going anywhere. You're gonna have six of these. So you do one on every one. So I go down to the second ring, and I go between here and here. So I take it down and up. That way, once you get it twisted on there, it does not move. And I'm gonna do a total of 18. And if you put like three in each section, you're gonna have 18. Okay, now you can do it any way you want to. You can go and do all the middle ones, I mean all the inside ones if you want to, or you can take it step by step. Like, you know, I could go all the way around and do the middle one. I go in between that bar, and I lay one a little bit longer, and that's the one I usually take and Either way, curl under that bar to where that's, that twist tie, zip tie. Pipe cleaner is not going anywhere, okay? And then I will take and go right here. And the reason that I like to go between these two is because it's not gonna slide. You can go between them and it's not gonna slide anywhere. So you know you've got both of those. Now you're gonna to have to do one in the middle. Some people measure and do ever four inches or this is just the way I like to do it. To get the one in the center of your section, I use two and three. I use these two bars and I go under both of them. And you wanna pull this one fairly tight to keep it from moving or you can go back and add a little glue. And I'll tell you the re and I come down, see how this, knot or whatever you want to call it is on the second ring that's where i want to twist this one so that when i put in my mesh it's all there together pull it kind of tight and twist it two or three times so if you pull it down you got the tension of the wire yeah and you could break it if you pull it too tight but if you wanted to put a little bit of glue on each side you can do that too it's no big deal or if it moves a little bit it's not going to matter so i do every section like that so you've got these four and one in the middle. So I would go to this one, and I would go up this one. <laughs> Donna Smith says, happy Thursday, Julie. Hi, Donna. I hope you're feeling better than I am. Last week, like 
to the gut me. I haven't felt well all week. Okay, so there's this on the top, this one between these two, and I do this for every wreath that I make on these frames. This is the way I load, it call it load the frame. Okay, and then I'm gonna go here in the middle and do this one and come down to this. Now the reason I do that is because once you finish your wreath, you don't have anything on this bottom ring. You could hang it anywhere on the door or a nail or whatever on this bottom ring because you don't have any, any zip ties, nothing. But it, yet it's covered, okay? So that's how you're gonna, and you're gonna put 18 of them. When you get done, this is what you have. Okay? And you see you're gonna have six going to the inside, 12 on the outside. Does that make sense? Okay, now you're gonna be ready to put your mesh on. You've cut it 19 and a half inches, and I'm going to do, it's got a couple of extra here. I'm going to do, um, since this frays pretty bad, see how it's beginning to fray? And the more you handle it, the more it frays but you can't do it with a wood burner. You can do a ruffle and then just trim the phrase when you're done if you want to. But I like to take it and fold it. Doesn't have to be in half exactly, but I fold it to where it, y'all see me do it before, it just barely covers each other like this. And then I lay it down, hold it in the middle, and then I just crimp it. There's that cut edge, it's gonna be in the middle. You make a little bow tie, okay? And then I turn it over to put it in my wreath. And just start anywhere you want to. If you want to do the inside first, then go this way. Put it in there, and you want to pull it fairly tight, twist it about three times. Okay, so you've kind of got a, you've got a ruffle, but you do see some edges here. A lot of times what I do with these wreaths is I will spray it with that um, clear coat <coughs> 2X, and it will come, some people said hairspray, but I don't know, I'd be afraid hairspray would collect all kinds of other things, but usually when I do a wreath in these neutral colors, I'm doing something kind of country and rustic anyway, people don't mind the phrase. When I'm done, before I ship it, I just cut any loose frayed edges but you're gonna be put six of these around on the inside. If you want to do this one, then this one, then this one, and then put them on any way you want to. They're all done the same way. So I'll, I would take another one and just get it to where it, this is probably close to the kerfuffle, but not exactly. And it's just, see, I maybe got an inch. Just lay it down, kind of hold that where it doesn't move, and then take the center of it and just curl it, okay? Now if I go, when I get ready to do the bottom, I'm gonna push that pipe cleaner up, put this in here like this, and twist it about three times. And then when you're done, you can kind of fix all these the way you want them. Okay, now let me, I'm just about finished the wreath. This is what it's gonna look like when you're almost done. And that's just with, um, I still have, I've done the inside and I've done all of the outside. One, two, three. I have four more to put on here, which are gonna be these. So I'm gonna undo those and add my four here to the bottom. Then you're gonna see it really does create a, 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 a pretty full wreath. And this is just with the the mesh from Hobby Lobby. I like this particular mesh because I like the neutral colors. So I did all of them except these four ruffles or whatever you want to call them. And you can see there's some fray, but I don't, I'm not going to worry about it right now. And I'm going to show you your options. You could take this wreath, depending on what you put on it and keep this base 
year round. Just add different color ribbon, different color sign, different type of sign. Hobby Lobby actually has some very nice signs. Um, I thought I knew what I was going to put on this one, but I went in Hobby Lobby yesterday and found something different. So, okay, so I fold it, scrunch it in the middle to where you kind of put this edge on the inside there where it wouldn't fray quite as much. You got to turn it over because you want these edges on the bottom. So you're kind of making a bow tie. So you ended up with 18 pieces. Twist it about three times because you don't want it coming loose right now. Okay, this is the last one. See, it was towards the end of the row, so it's, it's curled up a little. So just take it and fold it over barely. Straighten it out a little. And then just curl it. Scrunch it together. Turn it over. This is the last one. Slipping up from me. Okay. Now, I usually try and just kind of take all my ends around the edges, usually have 12 of them, and kind of just put them down, getting ready for my ribbon. And then, you know, have an idea of how I want to do it. And then you've got these here in the middle. There's six. Depending on what sign you use and how you want to do it, but you can see, I mean that it, that's a that's a pretty full wreath. That would be fine. But if you wanted to add a pop of color, you can use a different color from Hobby Lobby. And I I cut a couple of white because <coughs> let me show you the sign. They this week they had their crosses on sale, and I found this. Um, and I thought that would be pretty. So I'm gonna like put it kind of to the side in a big bow. So I thought, well, I'm gonna add, I think, you know, you can always change it. I think I'm gonna every other one put, just around the edge, I'm gonna put a little bit of white. And for those, I cut at uh, just 10 inches because you want just a little pop of white. And I'd already cut them and kind of squished them together. And I'm gonna go opposite. If I decide to put them in the middle, I would use these, because that's your only choices. So I wanna go, not the one right under it, but the one catty cornered. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Now, it just depends. Sometimes I undo this twist, and sometimes I don't. It's just a matter of preference. This is kinda of sticking, so it just depends on what you wanna do. But you can add a little bit of color it can be taken out easily. And like I said, these are cut to 10 inches. Same thing, it's a cheaper mesh, but that will make a fuller wreath and you're not using expensive mesh. And you wanna, I wanna skip one because I, I don't want white in every single one. So I'm gonna put it down in there and just give it a couple of twists. This cheaper mesh does pull on everything. And I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna put one here. You wouldn't have to do this, but this is how you could make, you know, red, white, and blue on a beige base. Something springy. Okay, I'm gonna put one there. And this is just uh, the cheaper white mesh. Hobby Lobby has a lot of different colors. You could uh, do one in pretty yellows and put flowers in it. You could do it just like this. Instead of adding ribbon, you could put flowers in these for spring. You don't have to have a sign if you don't want to. Okay, so I'm gonna skip and put one here. I don't think I'm going to need any in the center because of my bow and my sign, but I can always add them when I start adding those elements and see.
this is, you know, where you get to, to be creative. Get your base going. And then work on it until you like it. I just, like I said, since that sign had so much um, white in it, I'll show you what else. I got another cross, too, that I thought would be pretty. Okay. So you see how that just kind of added some fullness and some color? Now, if you wanted to, you could go back and, for sure, you could put white all on the inside. I, I don't think I'm going to, but we'll see. But I also picked up this pretty cross. The crosses are 50% off. This says, as for me and my house, will serve the Lord. See, that would kind of blend with this too much, so you might would want to add some more. But I had this one is what I was going to use. It did not come from Hobby Lobby. If I used a big one like this, I would probably put it down, either in the very center and then just ribbons around it. Hobby Lobby has a lot of good signs, though. Some of them are way too big for wreaths, but something like this is fine. Or you could put it more to the bottom and a big bow here with your ribbons. So I, I'll be making something with both of these, but um, you do have a lot of choices. And like I said, this week, this was hanging with the crosses. Now, it says wall decor, but it was $8.99. I got it for $4.50. Even if she didn't ring it up as a cross, Wall decor is um, half price this week. Next week will be table decor, which will be any of your signs that sit, that are thick or whatever. Okay, and I decided just choose you some ribbon that you like. Since I'm going with the neutral and the black, I've already cut my ribbon, and I cut oh, nine pieces of each, of two colors. I wanted this black with the cream, and then I wanted this beige with the white. So what I'm going to do, and I've already cut them at 13 inches, dovetailed the ends. So I'm gonna move that aside. It's sticking. I'm gonna move that aside. And I know I'm gonna do the outside. And my plan is to put it here in these that do not have the white, okay? So I'm gonna take it, I've already got it folded in half, and I'm gonna put one and then kind of lay the other and then just scrunch them. Kind of turn them out. Take your fingers and just curl it a little bit. And don't worry too much because you can always go back and fix these after. But these are gonna go in, in these that uh, don't have the extra white. Wreathers are always, always fixing their bows. All right, I think what I'm gonna do, sometimes you just have to do it and see if you like it. I think what I'm going to do, this one I put the, the wide up and the, the smaller down. I may try to see how I like with the wider down and then alternate them. If I don't like it, I just change it. But I'm gonna skip this one. And sometimes I just pull out a lot of different stuff um, and work at it until I get things the way I like it. I think, I don't even know what they're called, but they make these little round balls that look like jute or they look different. And I'm not too sure something like that wouldn't look real cute in here once I get the sign on. But for now, I'm going to alternate my ribbons all the way around the bottom. I'm going to skip that white one. I do have a third ribbon that I could go back, maybe add in the white. Ed will tell you, I just work on them until it's the way I like them. I have, I have something in mind, usually. but then sometimes it doesn't turn out the way I like it, so I just keep adding to it until I like it. It has to hang at least a week in the utility room <laughs> Usually. Before, before she packs it up. Okay. I'm really bad about grapevines. 
I'm really bad about it. I just keep adding stuff to the grape vine. Sometimes you just have to walk by it several times. I'm just going to alternate these, which means we've got 18 twist ties, and I'm just putting them in half. Sometimes if you put one, like if I was to go put one right here, it, it just, it might be too much, you know, so I, I like to skip. Plus, you know, the more ribbon that you put in them and stuff, the more expensive the wreaths are. I'm just going to kind of keep pulling these up and down. You don't want to totally cover up your pretty mesh, but you do want a little bit of color in it. These are very neutral colors. As long as you keep your sign black and white or whatever, I mean, you wouldn't even have to take out the ribbons to change the wreath. You could just change the sign. To me, 13 inches is just a good length. This should be the last one. Then I'm going to show you how I attach my signs, and then we'll make a bow. You notice I have not cut off my pipe cleaners yet. That's one of the last things I do when I'm sure I'm not going to add anything else. Uh, because a lot of times, those pipe cleaners really help you glue things to them so that they stick really well. Now see, as it is right now, I got that one upside down. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's the right side of the ribbon. That's... Brenda Bracken says good afternoon. Hi, Brenda. Hope you're doing well today. Let me see, make sure I don't have any of the others. I don't think so. The others are the right side of the ribbon. That one's hard to tell. This one's very easy to tell. And you can tell, see, your ribbon wants to stick on that mesh. Now, as it is right now, there's no up or down, there's no right or wrong. So that's gonna change when I decide where I wanna put my sign. This sign happens to have the little hook on it. So that, that helps me out a little bit. I'm gonna take two pipe cleaners and I'm gonna run one through that little hook and then just twist it. That, that will hold it. If you wanna put glue on it, you can. And this one I'm going to staple at the bottom down here. I'm getting a staple gun, and I know this is going to be loud. And you want to make sure that your staples are not going to go through. This is plenty thick. And if you want to put a little glue on it, you can. I'm going to put just a couple of staples. And Ed, would you go get me the hammer? This says flat staples, but maybe because I don't have it on a flat surface, the cross is sticking up. Oops. I think I'm out of staples on this one anyway. Maybe. You see how this really moves? I could glue that and it probably would not pull out. That's a pitiful hammer. You should have stole a better one. <laughs> So I'm just going to make sure. See, it's not laying flat on the surface because of that cross. Okay. I think that's fine. I could put glue there if I wanted to, but I think we're good. When you attach your sign to your wreath, you want to make sure that you go through the mesh and that you attach it to a bar. Um, you don't want to attach it just to a pipe cleaner or a piece of mesh. And I'm going to do this one there, I think, and put a bow here. And see, I'm going to wait till I put it on here and see how many of these I cover up. There's no reason to put ribbon in here if you're going to cover it up. 
So I want it all. So I'm gonna go through the mesh. The mesh will help your sign hold it up. But I wanna make sure that it gets not on the same side of the bar, but on a different side. I'll turn it over in a second and show you. Sometimes your pipe cleaners don't like going through a couple of layers of mesh either. They get stuck. I do have a needle somewhere. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it over and look. See, they're, they're both on the same side of this wire, so I don't want that. I'm gonna make sure I, it's on both sides of the wire. I won't pull it real tight yet, because that may not be where I want it. Probably would have been better to go up just a little bit and have the support there of that. But we'll wait. And I know I'm gonna be covering up this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and twist this. This is one of the inside. I'm gonna clip it off, because I don't need it. I'm not gonna put ribbon or anything in it, because your sign is covering it. And you don't have to put it through the same tube. You just, I think I wanna move it over just a tad. I don't want it to look like it's sinking down into the middle of the leaf. So we're gonna go maybe to an outer frame here. Sometimes the plot of putting your sign on is the hardest, most tedious. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over and make sure, see this one is on this first one, this one's on like the second one over here. I'm not gonna clip those off yet, because I wanna make sure my sign is secure and that it's where I want it. So what I do is usually just twist it several times and you can even put it through another one. You don't want anything scratchy back here though. And this is how it's easy to take your sign off. You just find where it's attached and un undo it. I normally don't put any kind of glue back here on these. See this one, I'll go into that one again and twist it some more. Cut it off. And even twist it around that one. Well, that'll be fairly easy to find those when I if and when I want to remove the sign. Okay, now you do have a top and a bottom. So now you have to decide, do I want to put white? And I'm thinking maybe, well no, I hadn't put the bow in there yet. Let's see. There's one, there's one. Probably gonna cut both of, oh, that's outside. I don't wanna cut it off. And you can manipulate your mesh a little bit if you want it to kind of frame your sign. That is inside, but I think, let me think if I put some white here and some white there. Are you thinking out loud? Yeah. I'm thinking I'm gonna wait till I put the bow on and then I may add some white. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my bow. And I'll adjust these ribbons to put in a box to mail it. And see, I'm still not gonna cut any of these off because I'm, I'm not finished. So I might change my mind about something. So I'm not gonna cut any of it off. Okay, for my bow, 
I like to use my same ribbons and maybe add one or two. We're gonna keep this fairly simple, but we are gonna use this black and white. We're gonna use this one. And then I'm gonna add this beige and white. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of this. So I'll show you how I do my bow. If you don't, if you can make bows by hand, a lot of times I do, but I'm gonna show you, I have what is called an easy bow maker. And it is easy. You wanna have a zip tie handy and a pipe cleaner. Not a half one, a whole pipe cleaner. Okay. I'm gonna start, see I have three narrow ribbons and one wide ribbon. So I'm gonna start with the wide ribbon where it's on the bottom. And depending on how you wanna do your tails, I do want tails hanging down and I usually just kind of guess. You know, if the bow goes here, you know, how long do I want tails? And you can always cut them off. Yeah, be careful for the afternoon. We'll have to watch replay. That's fine, Kathy. Hope you're having a good afternoon. My videos with wreaths do take a little bit longer, even though I try to do as much as I can ahead of time. Okay, I'm gonna cut this. This is just the tail, one of the tails to my bow. So I'm gonna like pinch it in the middle and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there like that. I like doing these first so that they're on the bottom and they lay down flat. If you do one and then make a loop and a loop, then you've got one tail here and one tail here. I just, I just like to do it this way. Okay, then I'm gonna take this and just kind of figure out, I don't normally do larger than five inches. This is a really thick ribbon. Let's see how big this loop is. Five inches, that's, that's about right. I usually like to do five. So I'm just gonna kind of scrunch this. This doesn't scrunch together really easy, but I don't, I don't want a tail over here, so I'm just gonna put a little bit there in the rods, and you're gonna take it and twist it to where it's laying with the, call it the bad side, facing you, so that when you go to make your loop, this is the good side, am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's kinda of hard to tell with this one. All right, I want my loops to be five inches, so I'm gonna, this is marked, I'm going to go to the five and hold it to get a five inch loop. And then I'm going to push this in there and I'm going to twist it to where the bad side is up. You'll see in a minute why I do so many bows by hand. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to put it back in here. It's got a five on the other side and I'm going to put it in there and twist it. Now I'm gonna do three loops with this ribbon. So it's the same thing, twist it, do another loop. You've got a loop, they're all gonna be the same size right here. So you've got another one to kinda put your fingers in and measure. Doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. You wanna twist it. You might not even realize that these, this is not as obvious. Um, as some ribbon. So you might would not even know if you had the bad side up. So I'm going to do another one. I'd call, I'd call it the back side, not the yeah. bad side. <laughs> well, it is the bad side of the ribbon, but it is the back of the ribbon too. Twist it again, and we're going to do one more loop on each side. This is what they call a 3 2 1 bow. You do three loops on each side, two loops on each side, one loop on each side. Okay. And you just twist it either any way you want to, whether towards you or away from you. There is a dowel that goes here to hold your ribbon, but I don't use it half the time. Okay, so now, I don't have to twist this one. 
time was a little short. You could make another loop for another tail, but I'm not going to. I'm going to cut this off right there. So right now I have three loops. One up, one down, one in the middle. Same on this side. Got one up, bring one down, one in the middle. Okay. Now I'm gonna in my next ribbon. I'm gonna do two loops, and I'm gonna try to do them to where they fit on each side of that. So the next ribbon I'm gonna use is this one. Same thing. I'm gonna do my tails on this one first. I don't want them quite as long as the other, but fairly close. So I'm gonna cut off just enough to. You can dove your, the ends of your ribbon now if you want to. I'm gonna put that on there and lay it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna come in a little bit. This one's gonna be about four and a half. So I'm gonna pinch it there and turn it to where the fat side of the ribbon Bring my loop, twist it to the back side. Now I don't want it quite that short. Where's the four? Right there, except I pulled that loop out. So it's gonna be roughly four inches, okay? Twist it to where I've got the back side, make another loop, find your four. Where they're roughly the same size, twist it, make another loop the same size, twist it. Your twist is always here in the center, and then I'm going to make my final loop. I'm only doing two. and then I'm gonna cut it off there. Okay, so see these are gonna go into the tail. So these are gonna kinda go like this. Where you've got this one in the middle and these two on the sides. Doesn't matter which one up, which one down. They should be fairly close to the same side. Okay. Now this one, I think I'm just gonna do one, and then I'm gonna do one with that one on the top too. And the one on top, I don't know if I'm gonna do tails with it or not. So I'm gonna put my tails in there. And just, you want this flattened down, tails in the center. This one just a little smaller than those, which roughly this is about three and a half. So we're just going to twist it, make one loop on the other side about three and a half. Let's see if these are fairly close to the same size. And that's all I'm going to put there. All right, just because I, I like this ribbon, I'm gonna add a little, a little something. It's just a, like a burlap ribbon. And I just like it. And I'm just gonna do one loop on each side. This one you don't really have to twist because it's kind of the same on both sides. And then I'm gonna do a little button loop right there. Oh, now that one I will bring down. I didn't do my tails, so I think that's okay. Alright, now you've kind of got, see how you've got them stacked here? 
this is where it could get tricky and that's why I like to use a zip tie. Let's see if I can do this where you can see it. I'm gonna move this over here because I've got to catch this loop right here in the center. So I'm gonna put my two fingers across all the way to the bottom and raise it up just a little bit and make sure that I've caught this loop here too. And I'm gonna raise it up and I'm gonna slip my zip tie head up between here and through and kind of raise it up and hope I don't drop it. I'm trying to hold it with all those fingers. So there's one part of it. There's the other part of the zip tie and I am gonna, I don't know if y'all can see, I'm gonna zip tie this together. think but before you zip tie it real tight you have to turn it over put your pipe cleaner through there because that's what's going to attach it to your wreath so you want to run that pipe cleaner through there before you zip it and then you just want to Pull it fairly tight. Once you get that zip tie on there, cut it off. Then you can, this is what's going to put it to your wreath, okay? Then you can take your bow and just pull and fluff and <laughs> do whatever. Listen, you're moving that bow and it's having trouble focusing on it. you need to look I got that a little long so I'm just gonna, you don't really want to see that I don't know why I'm fluffing it now because once I get it on the wreath I'll have to fluff it again okay so then I'm gonna bring my wreath back did I lose everybody with the bow making no <laughs> and then you have to decide where you want your wreath to go. I like for it to be, I just always do my sign on one side and my bow on the other. And you could put it higher. You could put it exactly across. I kind of like it in between. It's probably going to go right through here. Let's see if that's going to look right. Here again, this is where I, if, if I'm doing it at home by myself, I kind of put it on, there again, you want it on the ring. You don't want to pull it so far down in there that your bow is squished and looks like it's drowning. So I just twist it a time or two to where it's there and then I come back and twist it and turn it and decide if that's where I really want it. You can curl, you can cut these shorter. I don't think we're gonna need to add any ribbon to the inside, but I won't know until I get my bow fluffed. See, here's one to the inside, there's one to the inside. I usually like to hang out my bow and fluff it and look at it, so. There's the third one. It's real hard to tell when it's laying down flat on the table. Now just, you know, I don't know that that's where I'll leave it, but that's kind of what it's beginning to look like. Okay. Okay, now. You got to decide what you want to do with these. Um, I could either add some white here or I could put uh, more ribbon.
I just have to decide what I want to do before I cut anything. Um, let me cut a little piece of white and see. Okay, so I'm just going to do 10 inches. I feel like Brubaker says it's so pretty. It's very simple and just neutral. And this is why you don't cut your pipe cleaners until you're satisfied with everything you want to put on it. I may not like this white on white. I may decide that I want ribbon tails there. I don't know, I think we kind of, with the bow, I think we have enough ribbon tails. So I'm gonna leave that for now, but I'm gonna go here under this and take this one. It's one of the six on the inside cut it off. I'm not going to add anything there because it's hit by the bow anyway. And there's another one right under the bow that I'm going to do the same thing with. Always when you're twisting, <laughs> make sure you're twisting in the right direction and that you're not untwisting your pipe cleaner. I have done that before. Using that one. Then there's one right here. And there's one here. I think I'm gonna not use this one. Because I do like long, long ribbon tails. I'm gonna put white in one of these. I got to decide which one. So let me cut one more white. The white leads out to center. Always close up your rotary cutter the minute you get done with it, otherwise you're gonna cut. As you can tell mine, I think, needs a new blade. Either going to be added straight down from this one, which I think that's what I'm going to do. And you can manipulate your Now, there's nothing that um, says we can't add more ribbon to these if we wanted to, but I think our bow is big enough. And uh, even though I'm cutting these, they're still, like that one's about that long. I could change my mind and go back in there and change it. I just don't like them sticking out. Now, you can either dovetail these or you can curl them. If you like curled, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off too. And just fold it under because it just kind of blends with the white. That's the outside, that's the outside, and I'm still not sure about the outside yet, so I'm not touching the outside ones. Just the ones on the inside right now. Cause you never know, I may go 
find those little balls and add something else to the outside, and I may not. I'm just gonna make sure I have all those to deal with out there. Okay, if you want, let me show you how you curl your ribbon tails. You don't have to dovetail them if you want to curl them, but what I like to do instead of dovetailing is just angle them. That way if people don't want them to stay curled, they can undo them and you still have a pretty end. Then you just take them and you start rolling them. And you just roll them up this one won't do anything but these stiffer ones and then you just kind of pull the inside whichever way you want it out over you can have them a little curly or you can leave them curled up a lot Let's see I like the black down though so you can leave some down uncurled. Take your finger and it'll curl them a little. Here again, this is easier to do if you have it hanging. So just depending on if you like curl tails or the straight ones. You can mix them. These, I may just go back and cut them fairly short. And those got twisted because that's the right side. Now y'all see why I have to hang things up because then you can see all these little edges. I want it hanging like it's on the customer's door. And I'm still not going to cut off it does make a big difference when you go through and cut off all these little um, pipe cleaners. It gives it a, a more finished look, but I'm still not positive that I'm not gonna. Um, you could go and add jute. You could add raffia if you want it really country looking. That makes sense. So I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna add to them, but I'm gonna leave them off. Okay, but that's pretty much, pretty much it. And like I said, you could just change out your bow. Um, you could let all these go long. Just curled a little, however. But I think it turned out really cute. Um, I have some little crosses that I could even put in here or something. We'll see. I'll show you a picture of it when I when I finish totally and get all the things cut and the way they're supposed to be hanging and 
sticking. That's that's the one thing, like I said, I will say about Hobby Lobby mesh. It's a cheaper oh. mesh. Doesn't mean you can't use it, but I don't know if you've noticed, everything is sticking to it. But what you need to do, once you get something on your door, is adjust it anyway. It's sticking to the ribbon. Well, actually the ribbon is sticking to it. See, this won't be sticking out there. That'll be cut off. But I just wanted to show y'all how you can take and then see how it frays here. You, you just take your scissors and once I get them all trimmed, I will spray it with something. Um, so what do y'all think? I hope I just showed you how you can take mesh from the Hobby Lobby and change it up. You could take the white out. You could add blue and red and put something else here, different ribbon. And, but once you've got, there's your back. Once you've got this base, and I'll go back and, that's my bow, I'll fix it. But uh, you could use this base for just about anything. See, that's with that sign, but say I wanted to use this cross instead of that, I probably wouldn't have had this white. You might would have maybe put in a darker brown. Always pull your colors from your sign. Uh, your sign will determine your ribbon, your mesh, and everything. So um, always pull your colors from your sign. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to take that today. Um, I'll hang it up in my utility room and then decide what I'm going to add to it later, what I'm going to do with the outer edges and stuff. You don't want to put so much on it that you take away from your sign. So, okay, I appreciate y'all staying with me today long enough to get this done. But, um, and I hope I've shown you how you can take um, just a Dollar Tree work form and you can use mesh from Hobby Lobby. And you can make a base and change it up for several seasons and it doesn't have to be just one. This can go outside, inside. Uh, you know, you might wanna add a little uh, greenery to it. You could add a little white flowers to it. You don't even have to have a sign. You could just put a pretty bow in the middle and just have ribbons and, and mesh. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So, you know, don't, if that's the only place you can get mesh, then work with what you can get and make something that you like and you can do something pretty. So, all right, I will, I'm hot now, um, be on Monday at one o'clock again and I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do, but um, hopefully it'll be something fun and that I can, um, I've got a few things I'm working on that I think you're really gonna like for spring. Um, I don't think I even plugged up my glue gun, did I? Because um, we didn't want to use glue any. I didn't know, if, I may still yet use some, but. Uh, but anyway, we have some things that we're working on for spring. Hopefully it will be new and interesting for you. So uh, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me today, um, more than y'all know. And I'll be back Monday at one. Y'all have a great weekend and we'll see you Monday.